Hi everyone, I'm Ross Fairgreave. I'm a freelance cameraman and video editor based here in the UK. Have you ever run into the problem when you're colour grading your footage or doing some colour correction and you've got your footage looking just how you want it to look, but then you export it or you upload it to YouTube or Vimeo say, and it looks totally different to how you wanted it to look. It looks really washed out, low contrast, low saturation, just kind of crap to be honest. It's really frustrating, especially if you spent a long time colour grading your footage and getting it to look exactly how you want, only for it to change as soon as you export it. In this little tutorial, I'm going to try and explain what we can do about that and how we can sort it out. First of all, though, we need to know what causes it. And unfortunately, because of what causes it, there's kind of no one size fits all. The reason being that this problem is really caused by the way that different pieces of software interpret footage. Unfortunately, the way that, say, um, QuickTime or VLC Player will both show the same video might make it look quite different. And the same goes for browsers. You can be watching the same YouTube video on, say, Google Chrome and then using Firefox, and again, it will probably look different, which is a massive pain because it means there's not just kind of one thing we can do that sorts out everything. What we can do, though, is um, kind of modify our footage, if you like, um, to a degree to mean that it looks good on everything, or we can optimize it for just one particular platform, say one piece of software or one browser, if we know that that's what people are going to be viewing it on. I will say at this point that I use mostly Adobe Premiere for my editing, so this in the tutorial I'm going to be uh, using Premiere. I'd imagine the same problem exists on Final Cut, I haven't actually checked myself, um, and so you can basically follow along with the, the tutorial. It'll be slightly different tools, but what we're going to basically do is create an adjustment layer, we're going to apply a LUT, uh, that I've created, um, and we're going to use that to, to kind of adjust the footage and make it look right. Talking about that LUT, uh, you can download it totally free. I'll put a link to a download link in the video description. So head over there, download the LUT, uh, and then you can follow along the video and we'll try and make the footage look a bit better. Okay, so let's dive in and we'll go and have a look. Okay, so here I am in Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, as an example, I'm just going to use the intro footage from this video. And let's assume that I've uh, graded this, I've, I've done all my colour correction, and this is how I want the colours to look. So I would export this and upload it to YouTube, and I'd, I'd kind of hope that it looked exactly like this, right? But I've already done that, I've uploaded this little clip to YouTube, so let's go and have a look. I'll come down to Chrome. And this is what it looks like. So on the right here, you can see that on YouTube, the colours look quite different. It's quite uh, undersaturated or desaturated compared to how I wanted it in Premiere. Uh, the contrast is also pretty low as well, and it just looks a little bit washed out. I mean, if I had spent a lot of time grading and colour correcting this, I, I didn't, but <laughs> if I had, I'd be pretty disappointed if all my hard work had then gone to waste uh, because it looks totally different in YouTube. What I want instead is it to look like this. So this is um, the corrected version, and I'm going to talk you through how to do that in just a second. Uh, and we can see this looks pretty much exactly the same as Premiere. And so that's what we'd hope to happen. So I'll hop back into Premiere and let's look at how we do this. So basically all we're going to do is apply that lookup table, that LUT, which you can download from the link in the description. Um, so I'm going to come up to the project pane here, click in here, and what I'm going to do is create an adjustment layer. And the reasons for that will become clear in a second. So you have to make sure you clicked in the project pane and then go File, New, Adjustment Layer. This little dialog will pop up just asking you to confirm the resolution and the frame rate of your adjustment layer. And you can just click OK and our adjustment layer arrives here. Now, an adjustment layer, if you haven't used one before, is basically just an empty video layer. Uh, it's just a transparent layer that you can apply effects to and then those effects will impact any layers that are below it. That sounds a bit complicated so I'll just show you it probably makes things simpler. Let's click and drag our adjustment layer and we're going to make sure that we put it above all of our other footage. So here I've got footage on tracks one and two so I'm going to put my adjustment layer on track three and I'm going to drag it the whole way along the whole length of the project. Now what this means is any effect that I put onto this adjustment layer will affect both of these and, and yeah, anything below it. In this case, it wouldn't matter much, but if you're know, a normal project, you might have you know, hundreds of, of different clips on you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 video tracks. And so to apply the LUT to every single individual clip would be a real pain. So with the adjustment layer, we only need to do it once. So I'll click on the adjustment layer and now we need to apply the LUT. I'm going to use the Lumetri color effect, but you can really use any method you like to use to apply a lookup table. 
Um, and equally, this similar sort of idea will work in any editing software, really. Be that, you know, Final Cut, Avid, whatever. Just use whichever way you like to apply a LUT. But as I say, I'm going to use Lumetri Color. So making sure that this is clicked, I'm going to come up to Effects. And you can either, oh, I've already done it here, you can either type in Lumetri Color uh, or start to type it and it will come up. Or you can just go to Video Effects, Color Correction, Lumetri Color, and you'll find it there. So I'm going to click that and drag it down to my adjustment layer and drop it on there. And absolutely nothing happens <laughs> because while we've put the Lumetri Color effect on there, we haven't told Lumetri Color which LUT we want it to load. So let's go and do that. So again, making sure that the adjustment layer is clicked, is selected, we're going to come back up here and we're going to go to Effect Controls. And we can see now that Lumetri Color is applied to our adjustment layer. If we open up the basic correction area here, and we can see there's all sorts of uh, different things you can do with Lumetri Color. We're gonna ignore all of these because we're not gonna do any, make any adjustments to it. All we wanna do at this point is just apply this LUT to get it ready for export. So where it says input LUT here, we're gonna come over to this drop down and have a click and go to browse. Then we're gonna select that LUT that you've downloaded. So it's um, it just you know navigate to wherever it, whatever it is on your computer and select it. So it's called Ross Fairgreave export fixer.cube. We'll select that file and we'll hit open. And now it will have an effect. Um, and the effect it has ain't that pretty, to be honest. It looks really oversaturated, really high contrast, but don't worry about that, because bearing in mind that we're trying to counteract a loss of contrast and saturation and various other things. So we're effectively overcompensating here to kind of nullify the, the washing out effect that we saw earlier on YouTube. So that's kind of it at this stage. We can then just export this in you know whichever way you would normally do, uh, you know, just whatever file, export, media, blah, 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 uh, and then upload that file to YouTube. I've already gone ahead and done that. So as we've seen, this corrected version is, oops, sorry, let me just, I'm just going to turn the adjustment layer off here. Obviously, make sure it's turned on when you export it, because it has to be turned on to have an effect. I'm going to turn it off just so that we can compare. And we've seen earlier on that that ends up looking like this, which is pretty much exactly how we want our video to look, which is great. Unfortunately, that's not the end of the story because different browsers, um, as I mentioned earlier, do uh, interpret footage in different ways. So I'm just going to show you, let's just go back to the uncorrected. Uh, and then if I go to Safari here, you can see the uncorrected in Safari is pretty much the same as Google Chrome. And that bodes quite well because it also means that the corrected is pretty much the same as it was in Chrome and it looks pretty much bang on for Premiere. Unfortunately, if we go to Firefox, it's a different story. This is the uncorrected, and you can see it's not particularly desaturated. The contrast is about where we expected. It's maybe a little bit darker, arguably, uh, and it's also a bit purple, but it's not desaturated and it's not low contrast, which means that when we then put that correction LUT on there, and this is the exact same video as the corrected one that I just showed you on, the, the same YouTube videos I just showed you on Chrome and on Safari, but now it looks abysmal because it looks wildly oversaturated, uh, skin tones look awful, um, contrast is really, really high, and it's just not how we want it to look at all. So what do we do? Unfortunately, this is kind of why I said there's no one size fits all. Really what you need to do is sort of hedge your bets. If you know that people are going to be viewing it solely through Chrome or Safari, by all means, you can do that full correction, it'll look great. But you need to be aware that if somebody does come across your video on Firefox, it'll look like crap. So what I tend to do instead is tone down the correction a little bit to a kind of 50% corrected. So let's just hop back into Premiere. To do this, I'll, I'm will i just going to turn the adjustment layer back on so we can see what I'm doing. Again, I'll select the adjustment layer. I'll come up to Effect Controls. And under Opacity, the opaqueness of that adjustment layer, the kind of uh, effectiveness of it, if you like, I'm going to lower this figure. First of all, I'm going to turn off this uh, little keyframe icon here. What that does is allow you to vary the opacity over time. We don't want that. We just want it to be 50% the whole time. So we'll turn that off. And we're going to change this from 100 to oops to 50. And we can see that um, saturation lowered slightly, as did the contrast. If we then export that, upload it to YouTube again, which I've again already gone ahead and done, we can see, so this is on Chrome. We've got the uncorrected. We've got the 50% corrected, which we can see is getting there. It's um, a little bit higher saturation. So let me just turn off the Premiere correction again so we can compare it to what we actually want it to look like. 
So yeah, we can see it's a little bit lower saturation than Premiere. It's slightly lower contrast, but it's not too far off. And we could probably accept that unless we're doing something super, super color critical. Again, it's not perfect compared to the corrected, but it's certainly better than the uncorrected. So there's uncorrected, there's 50% corrected. And generally speaking, we say this is probably okay, or I would say that that's okay for this particular purpose. Again, if we look at the same thing in Safari, 50% corrected, it looks okay, a little bit undersaturated, a little bit low contrast. Uh, likewise for Firefox, the fully corrected looked pretty horrendous, really oversaturated. The 50% corrected still looks a bit oversaturated, but we probably wouldn't look at this and think, oh my God, that's the crappiest grade I've ever seen. So at least this way, while none of them look absolutely perfect and look exactly how we intended in Premiere, they're all kind of close and would probably all be just about acceptable. I'll just quickly say that this doesn't just apply to YouTube, it also applies to uh, actually opening it in, in software itself. So if I'm just going to quickly hop over to the video file, let's look at uncorrected, and I'm going to open it with QuickTime Player. Uh, let's just shrink this down a little bit. So if we compare that to what we wanted it to look like, we can see that again it's undersaturated and it's low contrast, and it actually looks very similar to the, sorry, let me just bring up the uh, uncorrected uh, uncorrected Chrome looks very similar. So actually, if you know that you're going to be playing out your footage on QuickTime Player, I, I should say I'm using a Mac, this could be different on, on a PC, uh, so by all means do check. But for my purposes, I know that if I'm going to play it out on QuickTime Player, I will do 100% opacity on the adjustment layer and I'll fully correct it. However, if I go to VLC, which I've already opened down here, we can see that actually this is again the uncorrected in VLC and it looks pretty much spot on from the off. Uh, so that already looks good. So if you know you're gonna be playing out with VLC, you don't have to correct it. So unfortunately, as I say, this is why I said there's no one size fits all. For In my case, for QuickTime, I have to fully correct. VLC, I don't have to correct. And if I'm uploading it to YouTube, I'll generally do a 50% correction. So it's kind of okay, no matter what browser people are using. So that's about it. So I hope that helped you out. Again, I can only apologize that there's not a kind of one size fits all solution that just sorts everything out. But as you can hopefully tell now that you can kind of modify your footage to make sure that it looks pretty good on pretty much every platform. If you've got any questions, just drop them in the comments below. Um, also, I haven't done one of these kind of how to type videos for quite a long time. When I say a long time, I mean, about four years, so quite a long time. <laughs> uh, but it's kind of a New Year's resolution that I'm gonna start doing some more of them. So if you've got any problems, uh, anything that you wanna kind of get help with sorting out, be that when you're filming, be that when you're editing, be it color correction, any of those things, uh, either drop a comment below and I'll have a look and see if there's something I can I can help out with. Um, or you can drop me an email at info, I-N-F-O, at rossfairgrieve.com or get in touch with me through the contact form on my website, which is rossfairgrieve.com, fairly obviously. Um, so yeah, anything that you could do with a hand with, uh, give me a shout and I'll see if I can help you out on that note. If this little tutorial video has been useful to you, do feel free to hit the like button and the subscribe button and all that other stuff that I'm meant to tell you to do. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.